speakers. Oh. I've gone blank. <laughs> Chandrima Ch Ch Singh and Cecile Clark. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Chandrima, co-founder of Incubate London and Crowdfund Magic. I've uh, been researching about crowdfunding for quite some time now and have recently launched our um, venture Crowdfund Magic, which is a turnkey solution provider for launching your platform, together with Incubate London, which is about startup incubation program. Uh, let me introduce Cecile, who's the co-founder of Incubate London, and she'll talk you through the updates of crowdfunding. Thanks, Chandrima. So I'm Cecile Clark. I'm essentially a connector of people and ideas, and I just joined Chandrima for the two projects that, that she just mentioned uh, in order to provide both the entrepreneurial community and the crowdfunding industry uh, with the latest tools and um, ideas on how the industry is going to change. So let me uh, give you a fresh reminder of what the numbers actually are. And these are, bear in mind that these are estimates, but essentially we're saying that in terms of volume, in 2013, the crowdfunding industry worldwide has raised 3.3 billion pounds. But it's only the tip of the iceberg in the sense that there is huge potential in this industry that hasn't been tapped yet. You may be familiar with the Nestor research that basically states that for the UK alone, the market could go up to 14.5 billion. Uh, over the next few, few years. But the key point in the crowdfunding industry right now is not so much the volume that it raises, but also the number of actors in it. And as Steve Shepard from Risk IT pointed out in the comments of this very meetup, actually the number of platforms is starting to outnumber the number of actually investable projects out there. So it's not so much about the gold rush anymore as it is about differentiation. The way we see it, it actually goes even further because we see the crowdfunding industry as an iceberg. Most of you may be familiar with the tip of it, which is the known cost of running a platform, which is officially announced on every website <coughs> and advertised for as being as low as possible, obviously, but which will cover only the cost of running the platform. So it may be a success fee. I, you may not have to pay for it if you don't raise enough money, but still, um, it's, let's call it the direct cost of the industry. The way the crowdfunding industry is trying to address that and minimize that is by developing white label platforms rather than overall platforms, which means that if you want to market a number of products, if you have, for instance, a whole pipeline of projects you want to fund, you would go the white label in order to cut the middleman and lower the cost. But we see that only as the tip of the iceberg in the sense that there's a whole array of costs that have to be taken into account when mounting a project. Now, the obvious one when you're on a platform is that you're competing with the rest of the world. You're basically saying, I want to fund my personal project, or I want to fund my financial business, or I want to fund a research project against the film industry, the music industry, personal projects, and everything out there. But you're also paying for every step of the way. You're paying for the payment gateway, which takes a cut for every transaction. You're paying for the legal services around crowdfunding. And that no, no, not only includes the legal services around the platform, it also includes legal services around wrapping up the deal, making sure it works well, and getting it regulated. 45% of transactions actually use escrow agreements, and those are not readily available either. And of course, there is a whole array of practical considerations from shipping costs to tax implications, etc. But the biggest point out there as well is marketing and PR, because since there's competition, you have to you know, create a pitch video, make sure that you have a PR campaign, make sure that your marketing materials are covered, and that's not readily accessible either. So the way we see it, the crowdfunding industry can be optimized by going first white label, and then by integrating the largest number of services possible to offer our clients, our customers, our borrowers, our lenders, the highest level of quality and the lowest price. And that's exactly what Crowdfund Magic does. So over to Chandrima to explain more details. Thank you, Cecile. Uh, as I mentioned, Crowdfund Magic is a turnkey solution to launch a crowdfunding platform. What we aim, though, is to provide a complete solution provides. Um, uh, out of the many features that we have, I would highlight four features which we think is really beneficial for our clients. Uh, we have a dedicated IT team, which means that we have our own ID infrastructure. Clients can edit customize, remove feature, and have a full support system through our dedicated IT team. One step ahead, we have also designed a marketing, branding, and PR package for our clients, which means they not only get the white label service, but they also get access to the marketing, branding, and PR through the market leaders that we are associated with. This also comes with full social media integration. Um, 
The next big thing is legal and compliance. We partnered with firms like Reed Smith to offer you the entire legal services, also with Buckwood Solicitors to give you fantastic deals and startup packages. And we also have FCA organization association who can help you with your umbrella system or appointed rep system when it comes to an equity platform. Uh, the newest thing is the escrow service, which we are launching shortly, uh, partnering with an European e money institution. This would be an escrow service specially designed for crowdfunding platform. And um, next slide, please. Right, so remember the iceberg, the competition. Uh, crowdfund magic is also about raising awareness through the targeted funding, for example, a research funding. Uh, research funding laboratory, for example, would need a platform uh, to raise funding, and we can offer that to them, uh, which will be dedicated to them. Also, charitable institution, uh, we can offer them um, a platform with no set of fee and a minimum monthly fee, so they can have a platform to raise funds for their uh, charities. Uh, same with celebs, they, uh, we've often come across celebs who promote their cause by using their fan club, so now they can have a platform which we can offer, and they can use their fan club and use our tools to raise funds. We have also have a university-based platform. This is specially designed for universities, so it can be an equity-based model, a donation, a reward, or a peer-to-peer, -peer, or a combination of all four. Uh, here, the students can upload their projects, and they have a new level of interaction, which would be uh, with mentors, associates, other entrepreneurs, and they can interact with the social media tools and the collaborative dashboards that we have. We also have a networking system, which can be internally using our tools and externally where they can participate programs from Incubate London, uh, which means that they would have a plug and play system. So Cecile will be elaborating how Incubate London works and what are the program features. Thank you. So in short, what we've come up with is that by building a technical platform that gives you the turnkey solution and gives you all the functionalities and that gives you the wraparound practical services that you need to create a platform, to market it and to uh, lead it end to end, you also need, at least for young entrepreneurs or people who haven't done this before, you need an initial layer of mentoring and um, go-to people, go-to experts that you can ask for advice and that would actually take you from a failed idea to um, a huge success. And that's how Incubate London was born because through our uh, own endeavors, we've met a lot of people, with crea we've created a huge network that we're continuously uh, growing and maintaining and um, therefore, the, well, let's say that the product of that is Incubate London. Um, it's a very simple idea, it's just as any incubator we're holding competitions twice a year where people apply either through the crowdfunding platform or uh, through uh, the schools that we partner with or generally speaking. And our panel of experts will then select the best of breeds of every program and then lead them through the intensive uh, training program that lasts typically four weeks. And that takes them either from the original idea, if it's really a startup and we're talking about seed capital, um, to the actual launch of the product. Or if it's an extension from the, the new idea of a product to that launch as well. And of course, they have access to a full network of mentors, specialists and all the array of services that we've mentioned before. And best of all, obviously, there's financing involved as well. So this is essentially where crowdfunding becomes part of the bigger scheme of financing. So typically, if you're a startup today, you would get part of your money from angel investors, part of your money from uh, seed investors, and part of your money from crowdfunding. Uh, and essentially, the incubator gives you access to big ticket um, items like uh, bulk investments of, say, 50 to 200K if you're a startup, or larger investments if you're at VC stage. And also, we're planning on building an investment pool whereby uh, the three or four competitors and um, the three or four winners of that compet uh, competition would actually pool their investments and share the risk and effectively de risk their individual startups. But because Incubate London is all about networking as well, and we want to leverage that knowledge of crowdfunding as well as the um, startup and entrepreneurial community, we're actually building a lot of events around Incubate London. And uh, that's actually where the whole cycle of conferences and networking events and meetups and mentoring comes in, which also becomes an accelerator for the marketing and PR aspect of the crowdfunding platform. So in short, our vision is actually a comprehensive one of the industry. And as the crowdfunding industry will move from occasional project funding to extensive business funding, that's where we see the point of merging those uh, definite layers. Like, this would typically be the technical and practical layer. 
This would then be the mentoring and um, uh, training layer. And now we see, remember the iceberg, the famous iceberg? Uh, there was also a big point in there that was uh, the payment gateways. So what we see now is that we need to integrate payment methods as well. And that's why we partner up with our newest venture, which is Mopez, which will provide a fully integrated mobile payment platform using the latest technology from NFC to online payment and an e-wallet ecosystem. So let me translate that for you. If you're in crowdfund magic, you would use Mopez to provide payment and funding and uh, basically execute the transactions without an external uh, intermediary. If you're in Incubate London, you actually use it as an e-wallet ecosystem. So, um, which means basically that you not only get funding, you not only get crowdfunding and seed money investments, you can also create an ecosystem whereby all the service providers and mentors and sponsors of the incubator also provide services through that online payment platform. So basically, that's a vision of the future. And well, basically, we're using, well, we're referring to a lot of partners to make this happen. And we're always looking for new partners to join us. So if you have any ideas or if you want to be part of a mentoring program or if you want to contribute to extending the crowdfunding platform, stay in touch. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm just going to turn this up one little bit. Maybe I overdid it before. Right, do we have some questions? Hi, Dylan. Um, just want to know how many companies have gone through your, um, through your incubator um, or your crowdfunding platform? Uh, I'll answer that. Uh, we've just recently launched uh, last week, so okay. we, we are in conversation with two universities. I uh, haven't yet signed the deal, so can't disclose the name but uh, we're working with uh, two universities to launch both the crowdfunding and the incubation program. Okay, thanks. If you put it back into context, basically, that's exactly what we're trying to model here. Rather than going through a mainstream, yet another mainstream platform, we're actually targeting specific business areas and specific institutions that are aware of crowdfunding and are attempting to leverage it as much as possible. But by partnering with them and giving them our expertise, we're actually planning on focusing the, the attention more on you know, university type of organizations and their affiliated research programs and um, charity work and that kind of thing. Hi, I'm Tatiana from Winerist. Um, I was wondering whether you have any upfront fees. I'll answer that again. Uh, basically, we do have a setup fee, which is anything between 500 to 2,000. And then we have an ongoing monthly charge, but that depends on what features, tools, and modules you would be taking. For example, if you go for a PR package, then that has an ongoing monthly charge of anything between um, 200 to 250 a month. But uh, the setup fee is one time, which is 500 to 2,000. Again, depending on which module you're going for and what tools and features you're selecting. Oh, hi, uh, Gabriel from uh, Investor Green. Um, I was wondering, in the con within the context of, let's say, lean startup, um, it looks like uh, your infrastructure is rather complex and you've put quite some work in it. Was there any uh, step on the way where you decided that, or at least you tested some of these hypotheses on actual customers and you thought, yes, this is a good idea to implement, or you've just you, you've just gone straight to a, a final product, and now you're you're waiting for clients to come in. Essentially, I'm not sure if, if I'm clear. Um, we've been doing a research for a year and a half, and we've tried to find out what the problems are when you launch a crowdfunding platform. We we realize that you obviously need a PR and marketing group. If you're launching an equity platform, you would need a FCA approval. You would need legal services. You also need incubation program when it comes to a university-related platform. So we've worked on that, did our research, and that's the reason we have this incubation program, uh, you know, kind of in a plugged-in system with Crowdfund Magic. For the Mopeys, maybe you can uh, mention. Well, it. basically, it all boils down to three different products that tend to work very well together. So we're, we're making an integrated offer out of them, but there are still three different prototypes and three different stages. So um, the incubator is obviously a, a pilot program that we go through with the universities. And 
we did test it in the sense that the interest is very strong and that we're building the, the actual content of the program in its de gritty details with the mentors and with the universities as well because we found out that a lot of them actually have programs but either they don't work properly or they need a different kind of infrastructure and because they have everything in house they're, they're actually moving on to externalization so which is why uh, we're also combining those two offers because effectively this is a service rendered, and this is an additional layer around it. As for Mopes, uh, it's actually a whole different story. And the founder of Mopes is here uh, later on, so you can ask Avishek more questions in detail. But essentially, mobile payment gateways is an entirely different beast. It works for everything. It works very well for Crowdfund Magic and for Incubate London, because they're uh, ecosystems that you can generate through mobile payment. But it has a whole different set of applications as well. So it, it has a different marketing strategy as well. It's just that because we're sister ventures in the sense that we, we know each other very well and we know how to work together, we market them together. And uh, Mopez is actually going through an interesting development phase of its own because it has potential clients in every area. And you know, NFC is the latest technology in mobile payment, which is also, I mean, the general public doesn't know about it yet, but the business users and the businesses are very keen on implementing it, which means that when you go to them, you're actually testing something by saying, if you want an in-store payment system with a mobile phone, uh, you market a different product. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.